Good morning, folks. <laughs> Take two. Um, yeah, I started recording a video just before this, and then I had an issue with one of my toddlers, and mama's not happy this morning. Uh, anyways, so before I get into the really Stephen Avery-centered uh, videos for the day, I wanted to take an opportunity to sort of walk you guys through how a process, I'm sorry, how a scene is supposed to be processed from the forensic analyst side of things. Now, we already have established that Sergeant Tyson fucked up the security of the crime scene when it comes to the processing of Teresa Hallbach's car. However, I believe that the entire investigation was fucked from beginning to end, and I will tell you why. Forensic analysts, uh, when there is a question of a scene, will usually be the first uh, people really allowed to walk through that scene. Prior to that, the scene is supposed to be secured by the officer, meaning it needs to be roped off. And until it's roped off, uh, they need to establish a perimeter, usually with a line of officers to keep anybody out of the immediate area of the scene. Then the forensic anal anal blah, 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 analysis team comes in, and when they come in, they're the ones who are walking through the scene. Now, while they're waiting for the forensics team to get there, typically the officers will be standing there. They'll be documenting. Uh, sometimes, if you're lucky, you'll get one, one or two that can take you know, just initial photographs of the scene. However, um, once the forensics team is on site, this is where it becomes tricky. Now, if you recall the initial photographs of Teresa Hallbach's car, you will remember that there were branches leaning up against it and a car hood. Here's the thing though, folks. That was the only car in the entire salvage yard that I have seen that was like that. Looked real fucking suspicious, didn't it? Now, here's my question to you folks. If Stephen Avery had killed Teresa Hallbach and he put the car on his own property, on his own family property, which just makes no sense whatsoever, fucking ever, why... Would he lean branches and a car hood and a bunch of other shit up against it when none of the other cars have ever been treated like that on the salvage yard? See, you have to look at human behavior here, folks. We'll get into that in another video. But the, I just wanted to put that thought in your head. Now... Upon arriving at the scene, the forensics team should have first started with photographing and documenting the scene. If they had access to a 3D scanner, the scene should have been scanned. Okay? Then, as each piece of debris is removed from around the immediate area of the car, that needs to be photographed, that needs to be documented, and it needs to be dusted for prints. I have yet to see anything entered into the record anywhere about the debris being dusted for prints. I mean, if Stephen Avery was bleeding so profusely as to leave his DNA, his blood, all over her car, why wasn't there any DNA or blood left on the tree branches and the hood, the spare hood? See... This is where I think the forensics team fucked up. And if they didn't fuck up, the processing lab fucked up. But then again, I have very little confidence in Ms. Kulhain. Uh, now, after the primary survey and walkthrough, they start to document and process the scene. So once that initial debris is removed, obviously they would be looking inside the vehicle to see if there were any signs of Ms. Hallbach. Actually, the, the officer should have done that initial check. And then they would have started by dusting the doors. They would not have handled those, those car handles with gloved hands, folks, because to handle 
that piece of evidence could compromise any fingerprints left. It would have smeared them and rubbed them off. So they would have dusted first. They would have dusted the entire perimeter of that fucking door. All right. Once they've dusted and they collect any fingerprint of print evidence that is left, they then open the car. They take an initial look through. They photograph as they're going along. And then they start bagging the evidence. Prior to that, they'll run fingerprint. Or sometimes, the, the you know, depending on the object, they'll process it at, back at the lab for fingerprints. Um, they'll start bagging the evidence, bagging all the, the you know, interior objects. Then they would start swabbing. And we've already covered how they swap. They would have checked the hood latch. Although that would not have been done until after they'd already moved the car to a secure location. Now, I had one commenter say, oh, yeah, they would totally get fingerprints off of the hood latch in a very sarcastic manner. Yes, ma'am, they would have. Okay? Ha Clearly, you have never opened the fucking hood to your own damn car. Otherwise, you would know that you have to release the latch and it is a wide enough piece of metal to leave at least a partial print. So, you know, here's a thought. Unless you have actually processed a scene or ever handled a vehicle in your life, don't talk shit. Just saying. Uh, now, once the initial scene has been processed, photographed, properly scanned, all that shit, they would have brought in a secure trailer, moved the car, but first they have to check tire impressions around the immediate area. They have to check any and all foot impressions around the immediate area. And they have to get that car into that fucking trailer. It is then moved to a secure location where they do even more processing of the vehicle. And they don't just take one or two swabs of every stain, folks. They pretty much clean up the fucking stain with cotton swabs. Because they need to make sure that they have enough D genetic material for not just initial testing, but future testing. And especially in the case of contamination, such as Ms. Coolhane and her fuck up, they would have to have enough samples to keep testing just in case. Because in the forensics business, CYOA is the rule. It's the rule of thumb. Cover your own ass is the rule. So you document, you document everything. Not only do you take pictures, you draw out a diagram. You then list any and everything that is in that immediate area or in that perimeter, not just the fucking car and the branches leaning up against it. You document the surrounding ground. You document pretty much every fucking leaf, any fallen leaves, anything. You document it all. Because you don't know what could have what on or under it. This is why I don't buy the magic bullet theory, folks. Is because if that scene had been processed correctly from the get-go, that bullet would have been found. Which calls into question the integrity of the forensics team. And why they're not more pissed off about this, I don't know, because it calls into question their methods and their ability to process a scene properly. All of that needs to be looked at here, folks, and I have yet to see a, a, a collection of evidence report from the car itself. The whole thing. I'm not just talking about the blood spatter uh, report. I'm talking about the whole evidence collection report. I'm sure that it'll be included with the, uh, with the crowdsourced documents that are being released. But until that time, I question the processing of that scene. And once that report is published, I will question it even further. I just wanted to make this video so that as you're going through this evidence, you can be a little more informed. Now, I have found a site that sort of breaks down the process as pretty concisely, gives you a good idea. So I will include the link to that site site in the description below. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you soon.